Mr. Transformers 96 here with another ranking video. Um, so this time I'm going to be ranking the Spider-Man villains, what I would consider the most uh, classic and iconic versions or characters from the Spider-Man's rogues gallery, from my least favorite to my favorite. Uh, these are my top 15 choices. There are of course more um, Spider-Man villains and I have more Marvel Legends figures of them as well. Um, but I decided to just stay with the more, most kind of classic ones in my opinion. Um, I, you know, like Hydro-Man, Jackal, uh, some of the superior uh, Sinister Six. I, I've got like other figures of them and, and they are certainly Spider-Man villains, but I don't consider them classic villains and they just, they're not on the same level as these ones in my opinion. So that's why I'm not including them in this ranking video. Uh, but you know, I had all these figures that I was taking pictures and I was like, hey, I, I should really do a cool ranking video. And I originally was going to do it just based on the figures themselves, but they're very hard to compare. Some of them are build -a figures some of them have crazy accessories and some of them from two packs and they're just they're not on the same level some of these so it would make it very hard to actually rank them fairly not to mention my personal preferences on the characters would start to weigh in as well so I decided to do it based on the actual um, characters themselves so this is not about the figures it's about the characters and I'm not just saying what's my favorite uh, version of them from the comics I'm taking all forms of media into consideration so comics TV shows games uh, movies those are all being taken into consideration I'm not holding holding any of these characters to one of those forms of media. I'm taking into consideration all of them for how I would rank them. Um, and then just as far as Spider-Man goes, I'm a, I'm a huge Spider-Man villain fan. I have been ever since I was a little kid. My favorite characters in Marvel are Spider-Man villains, and just in comic books in general as a kid especially. Uh, Spider-Man villains were my big thing as a kid, and they still are to this day to be honest. So I'm, uh, I'm very excited to see some of these characters get realized in film, and this is kind of coming off of the Spider-Man Far From Home release. So yeah, so uh, let's get started here with what I would rank as my number 15th choice, my least favorite out of these classic, iconic Spider-Man villains. And starting at the bottom of the list, I've got to go with Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin's never been a Spider-Man villain that I've really loved. Um, he's just, he's kind of in my head, at least as a kid especially, he's just kind of the rip-off Green Goblin, you know, if I, if just being a fan of a, this type of character, you just like Green Goblin more, and then this one's just kind of a, a weird side version of him, essentially. Um, and I've never, I hate orange, to be honest, I'm just not a fan of orange, so I've never been a fan of his color schemes either, so I just, Hobgoblin never uh, 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 connected for me, it was never an incarnation of him that I absolutely loved, um, so I've never been a big Hobgoblin fan, uh, however, he does have his fans, and definitely um, is a classic Spider-Man villain, I would say. And next up we have the Chameleon. Uh, the Chameleon's an interesting villain, you know, he's he's has a very simple power set essentially. He doesn't have any powers, but he just is uh, is kind of like a scroll but with more manual labor. Um, he actually has to use masks to uh, to disguise himself, which can be cool though. It's always a, a fun game to kind of guess who's the real one. He's impersonated Spider-Man and, and things like that to, to, uh, to turn the public against him. And he's an interesting villain, but he's, he's very small scale um, compared to all these others. But I do still consider him like a classic Spider-Man villain. Taking that 13th spot, we have Scorpion. Um, Scorpion is a, is a cool villain, and, uh, you know, I definitely all, all of the villains on this list I do like. Uh, but Scorpion's uh, a neat one, but a little eh for me. Um, he has a fun costume that's it's very classic and cheesy Spider-Man-y, uh, but he's never been a super cool villain that's had any, like, amazing storylines, in my opinion. He's always just kind of a, uh, a brute villain, I would say. He doesn't have a whole lot of fantastic motivation either, but he's still a good villain, and he is a classic Spider-Man villain. And next up is Vulture. Um, Vulture is a Spider-Man villain that when I was a kid, I was never a big fan of Vulture. I've grown to start to like him though, as I've seen him in more um, things. Uh, Spectac uh, Spectacular Spider-Man, I actually really did enjoy Vulture. Um, he was a good character in that in that show and a good member of the Sinister Six. Um, and then, especially with the movie Spider-Man Homecoming, I thought that he was a great villain in that. So I've started to really appreciate Vulture as time has gone on, but when, you know, I, Originally, I wasn't a huge fan of him, but as time has gone on, he's become a, a better villain in my eyes. 
All the way down in 11th place, we have Venom. This will be a very controversial uh, a place to put this character, as I think that everybody, or most people, would assume that Venom would be in, like, the top three on a ranking video like this. Uh, but for me, I like Venom, I do, um, but he's never been a, a character that I've, like, loved before. I think it's because there is a bit of gray zone with Venom sometimes, as to whether he's a hero or villain. Um, classically, he's a villain, and most of the time he's a villain, but every now and then he has heuristic... Uh, urges, and there are certainly versions of Venom where he's a, f a flat-out hero, um, so I think that that has always kind of stopped me from just loving him as a Spider-Man villain, and I also, uh, it's kind of a Hobgoblin, Green Goblin situation where you have one that's not as good as the other, and for me, when it comes to the symbiotes, uh, Venom is not as good as Carnage, so I, uh, I do kind of tend to have a big gap in between the two of them, and uh, therefore I just, I've never loved Venom before. I do like Venom, um, but he's definitely definitely not uh, as popular in my mind for me personally as he is for the rest of the world. Yeah, that's right. I put Shocker uh, in a better position than Venom on this list, uh, which is a Shocker on its own. Um, but I do enjoy Shocker, actually. I think he's got a very neat costume. I think the design of it's very cool. And really, all the iterations of his costume in, in uh, the comics, in the cartoons, and in the games have been really neat. Like, there's a lot of cool variations you can do on it. Um, the only version of it that I wasn't a fan of was in the film. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming wasn't a fan of Shocker in that movie, to be honest. Uh, both from his look and his performance, I thought it was weak on both accounts, to be uh, to be honest. But I do really like Shocker. Um, uh, particularly the Spectacular Spider-Man TV show was where I liked Shocker the most. Um, I thought that he was a very cool, funny character as well, um, but very effective too. And he had a neat design in that show as well. So I have I do like Shocker. I think he's a neat villain. And uh, obviously he's, you know, a lot of people's least favorite villains when it comes to some of the more classic ones. Um, but I think that he's a cool one and a little bit underrated. All right, in that ninth spot, we have Craven the Hunter. Um, you know, on, on this list of cool, super-powered, evil villains, uh, just having a guy who's a hunter and is just kind of hunting Spider-Man for the game of it sounds really lame, to be honest, but he's actually a really cool villain. Uh, he's one that um, is surprisingly cool uh, when, you know, compared to some of these other ones, but uh, he, he's a neat villain. He's definitely one that... Um, that uh, uh, he's He's cool in the sense that Spider-Man can't really reason with him because uh, he's just in it for the game of it, which is a fun motivation. It's not super complex, um, but it, it is pretty fun. There are some more complex motivations that, uh, that Craven takes on in certain comic books, and he does have some of the most famous uh, storylines with the fact that he is the one that, uh, that kills Spider-Man, and, and he dies and then comes back. He Craven's a pretty complex character in some iterations, um, but even in his most simple ones, he's still a fun one, and definitely a, a, a classic Spider-Man villain. Next up we have the Lizard. So this is one of the most sympathetic uh, villains from Spider-Man's rogues gallery, um, considering he's a decent person who transforms himself in his uh, in his desire to be normal uh, the, to into this monster. Um, so he's an interesting villain because of that. He's a little less villainy uh, than some of the other ones because of his more understandable and relatable uh, motivations and uh, and issues. Um, but nonetheless, he's still a very cool Spider-Man villain. Um, it's a it's a simple concept, but it's a neat one. It's very effective too, and uh, he has—he always has really cool looks to him. Especially comic book uh, drawings for this guy can be so cool because he's such a unique character that can be more dinosaurish or lizardish. Um, they can do more humanish or more monstrous. It, it just all depends on the artist and the storyline. But you can do a lot of cool things with him, and he fights Spider-Man in a more animalistic way, um, which is unique compared to some of the other villains. Even though a lot of Spider-Man villains are based on animals, they don't fight animalistic. Um, other than a lizard here, which I think is quite neat. Taking that seventh spot, we have the Rhino. Um, Rhino is uh, one of the more cheesy Spider-Man villains, I'd say. It's just, he's a big guy in a Rhino suit. Um, he's stupid, and he doesn't have fantastic motiva motivations. Ba mainly just needs the money, you know, and, and is a bad guy. That's about as deep as Rhino goes. Um, nonetheless, uh, Rhino is just a fun villain. He's he's cheesy in a good way, I'd say, and is definitely a classic Spider-Man villain, uh, kind of because of that. Some of Spider-Man villains can be cheesy 
cheesy, or at least their designs are very cheesy, but they're cool at the same way. Like, I don't know, I haven't really experienced any other comic characters that are kind of like that, that are cheesy cool. Um, and I think Spider-Man villains really hit that mark well. And again, I think that Rhino is one of the prime examples of that. Um, Rhino's always a fun character. I do like him in the Spectacular Spider-Man TV show. He's fun in the comics. Uh, even the movie, I, I actually, I'm one of the few people that likes the design of the movie Rhino that they went with for, um, uh, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, I, and I do like the choice of having Paul Giamatti. He, performance him. I think Paul Giamatti got a little too cartoonish for that movie. Uh, nonetheless, I still actually enjoyed the representation of Rhino for what we got, even though we didn't get much of him. Uh, but he's a fun, cheesy Spider-Man villain. Next up is the Sandman. Um, Sandman is a Spider-Man villain that has a very simplistic uh, uh, power set. He can absorb and use sand, um, but he can do so many cool things with it. There's just kind of like limitless possibilities of what this character can become and what his fight sequences can be like versus Spider-Man. Uh, he just has an interesting um, design to him and a very simplistic, just human design too. I even like the Norman Osborn styled, uh, just lines in his hair. Um, he's kind of like a buff Norman Osborn with sand powers just from a design perspective. Character-wise they're very different, but just design-wise that's essentially how he is, which is just kind of a fun a yeah, very iconic look in the Spider-Man universe. Um, but there's just so many cool things that this character can do, and he's had some interesting storylines in the past. Um, even in Spider-Man 3, I think that he has a very interesting storyline to him, and uh, that they make him a bit relatable, but he's still the villain for the movie, which I think is very cool as well. So uh, definitely one of the biggest Spider-Man villains, I'd say, and definitely quite a nice one. Um, I think that in everybody's list, he's kind of middle tier, uh, but he is still like a well-respected villain in the Spider-Man rogues gallery. All right, we're down to the top five, and starting off the top five is going to have to be Dr. Octopus for me. Um, one of the most popular and most iconic Spider-Man villains that there is. I think in most people's lists, he'd be in the top three, and he still makes it very high on mine. I just, some of the more quirkier cider villains, I, I kind of tend to like a little bit more than him, even though he's one of the biggest ones, but I still very much like Dr. Octopus. He's a fun villain. As a kid, I didn't like Dr. Octopus. I thought it was weird until I saw the movie, uh, Spider-Man 2. Um, um, then I started to actually enjoy Dr. Octopus and some of his other uh, incarnations um, from like the Spectacular Spider-Man TV show. I thought he was quite good in as well. And uh, he's just, he's a solid, fun villain. The idea of having um, mechanical arms attached to you is, is a very simple power, but it's utilized surprisingly well within a lot of the forms of media for Dr. Octopus. He, he does some very cool things with them, and they can also be designed in really cool ways. I prefer the kind of tube arms, very much like this figure, uh, where it's just like cylinders style arms. I think that that looks really neat and they're just simple with just lines in them. I kind of like the simplistic nature of that for the design of his arms um, but they obviously can do some more uh, some more complex and intricate uh, design features especially when it gets into the, some more of the kind of ultimate styled ones as well as even the uh, uh, female version of him that was shown in um, last year's um, Into the Spider-Verse I thought was extremely cool as far as her fight sequences. They were extremely unique in the way that she utilized her arms so Overall, I, I really do enjoy Dr. Octopus. He's a fun, classic Spider-Man villain who can match Spider-Man on a physical as well as intel intellectual level, uh, which is always very nice because some of these villains just match him intellectually and some of them match him physically, uh, but there's just a few that match him on both levels, which uh, just makes those villains the, um, the more iconic ones, I would say, and that is no doubt Dr. Octopus. Taking the fourth spot is going to be Green Goblin. Again, kind of with Dr. Octopus and Venom, which would be like the top three of the Spider-Man villains just from an iconic standpoint. Um, and I love Green Goblin, don't get me wrong, uh, but I did put him at fourth place. Um, like I was mentioning with Dr. Octopus, there are some villains that match Spider-Man intellectually and physically, which is what Green Goblin does. But Green Goblin takes it a step further with the added sprinkle of crazy on top of it, which makes him unpredictable, uh, which just makes the storylines that the Green Goblin is in um, that much more complex and interesting. One of my favorite storylines with the Green Goblin is from the Spectacular Spider-Man TV show. I, I've mentioned it a few times on this list, so you can definitely tell I'm a fan of it. Um, but there is a fantastic storyline with Norman Osborn, Harry Osborn, and Spider-Man that goes for a few episodes, and it's, it's the season finale of the first, or I think it's the first season, it's the season finale of the episode that has a great twist in it that at the time, when, when I was a kid, when I was watching it, I didn't see coming, and it like blew my mind and I absolutely loved it. Um, 
So I, I'm, I'm, I've always been a big fan of Green Goblin, especially since that TV show. But of course, the William Defoe performance of Green Goblin in the original Spider-Man film was my first introduction to the character, and because uh, that movie came out when I was like six, and um, and, and I've loved him ever since. Uh, and uh, you know, the incarnation of him in Spectac- or in the Amazing Spider-Man Two was not the best. It was an interesting one. I wouldn't say that he's Green Goblin though. He's more of a, uh, uh, more of kind of a, a hobgoblin in my opinion. So he's a variation on Goblin, and it's an interesting take on a variation of Goblin. Not a particularly strong one, though. But I think the classic Green Goblin is is uh, really fantastic. I'm excited to see the MCU's version of him when they finally get to him. Like I've uh, said, the top three choices for everyone's Spider-Man list normally um, is some sort of iteration of Dr. Octopus, Green Goblin, and Venom. For me, it's very different. Uh, my top three are ones that aren't typically in, in anybody's top three for Spider-Man villains. However, I'm just a fan of them. Some of them are a little bit more side villains, like uh, Electro here. Um, but nonetheless, they, they really spark something with, within me, um, and nothing sparks better than Electro here. I'm a big fan of Electro, always have been. I think originally I liked him simply because of his comic or his uh, his look in the comics the crazy face mask is so ridiculous cheesy but awesome at the same time just like Rhino he's cheesy but amazing uh, he's got fantastic electrical powers which is a very simple um, accessory uh, or a simple uh, uh, weapon um, for a character simple um, superpower um, but I think that he utilizes it in cool ways um, depending on the comic TV show movie type of thing and uh, overall I do really like him loved him in the spectacular spider-man TV show show, as well as the comics, and his uh, incarnation in the film, um, Maze of Spider-Man 2, I thought was okay. I thought it was an interesting take on him. Uh, definitely different uh, than what I was hoping for, um, but it was something that was okay. I am still happy to see him in a film, uh, no, but I do want the classic kind of costume that, uh, that unfortunately we never got. Um, but there is a character whose film debut was very accurate to his classic costume, and I couldn't be more happy with it. And that's, of course, Quentin Beck as Mysterio. I'm very happy with his on-screen iteration. Mysterio has been my second favorite Marvel character in general uh, since I was a little kid and uh, have always loved this character. And really, every incarnation of him, I think, is very cool. It's very fun for the fact that he is the only character on this list that doesn't have a single power. I think every other character, I'm going through the list, has power. Um, Chameleon doesn't have a power, but he has a physical real gimmick uh, to him. Uh, but everybody else at least has some sort of superpower. I guess Craven doesn't either. All right, but yeah, okay, so Craven and, and Chameleon don't. But uh, Mysterio definitely doesn't have a power, but it very much seems like he does have a power as he is a special effects artist for film, uh, which again, as a big film person, I'm uh, that always gets me a bit too, and um, but he uses his theatrics uh, to really create complex schemes in order to trick the mind of Spider-Man and the public, which is always very cool, and there's always fantastic uh, sequences of uh, illusions that he puts together, and no matter if you're watching a, a game, uh, a comic, a, a TV show, or, or a movie, there's always some sort of really neat illusion sequence to it, which is always very fun. There's uh, there's also an, an air of mystery behind the character, there's always something more to his plans, and there's always the question of what's real and what's not, which just makes any storyline that he's in that much more engaging, which is uh, really fun. Um, his movie debut in Spider-Man Far From Home is perfect in my in my mind. It's exactly what I was hoping for for a Mysterio reveal. It's, it's more than I was hoping for because they went very comic accurate, um, which I didn't expect before there was any pictures from the movie or anything like that. I never even dreamed of getting a costume that was so accurate to the comics, and uh, I thought that there would be a nice nod to the fishbowl, but I didn't think we'd actually get the fishbowl, and man, we got the fishbowl, and I, and I couldn't be happier about that. So overall, Mysterio is my second favorite Spider-Man villain, and uh, really love the character and I've loved every iteration of him that I've ever seen and uh, including that the most recent one with the the current film that's out now so uh, definitely my second favorite villain and my all-time favorite Spider-Man villain, uh, but also my all-time favorite Marvel character, is Carnage. Um, I've always been a huge fan of Carnage ever since I first found out about him as a little kid. Um, Carnage is 
is just such a vicious character. He's one of the most vicious Marvel characters that there is. Um, it's it's the idea, and it's it's a very simple concept, but it's a really a smart one, where it's just Eddie Brock isn't the best guy, um, but he's not a horrible, just murderous person uh, until he gets the symbiote on him, and it just amplifies the worst parts of his personality and makes him a villain. Um, but you take somebody who alone is a monster, uh, being a serial killer, and you g add uh, the a more actually more dangerous symbiote to them, it just amplifies them to an extreme amount that uh, that creates uh, an even bigger monster and just one that looks more like a monster. Um, he's a really cool character, he's always extremely powerful, and I always love the idea that Spider-Man always seems incapable of taking him down on his own. There's always some sort of team up to take down Carnage, which I always find very fun, uh, just because it, re it really shows you the dangerous nature of Carnage, and he's also a character that can't be reasoned with um, because he's just, uh, he's insane, and he, he's just after one thing, which is kind of death and destruction, um, which is... It's 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 a simple concept, um, but it's it's very effective in the unpredictability and uh, and just vicious approach that um, they can take him in in whatever form of media that they uh, currently have him in. Um, I think that he's terribly underutilized though, as he was never in the Spectacular Spider-Man TV show. Apparently, there was rumors that he was going to be in the third season, but that, unfortunately, it never made it to a third season. Outside of comics and the occasional um, game, there's not a whole, and of course the like the original kind of 80s or 90s TV show, um, there's not a whole lot of carnage in it within the media as he's never been in a movie um, other than his uh, his cameo in the Venom and credit scenes. So I do think that a, a proper version of him will be made into a film coming up quite soon and I'm extremely excited for that uh, considering I've, I've waited forever to see Carnage in an actual movie and uh, couldn't be any more excited for it. So there's my ranking for what I would consider to be the top 15 most iconic um, I, uh, classic Spider-Man villains from my least favorite to my favorite. Um, again, I like all of these villains, to be honest. I'm just, I'm a huge Spider-Man villain in general, or sorry, sorry I'm a huge Spider-Man villain fan in general, and therefore um, all of the classic ones I really do enjoy to some degree. Uh, but that's how I would rank them from my least favorite to my favorite. It was it was difficult to put the middle of this list together. Um, to finding my number one and number two, I've known that since I was a little kid, that was easy. Um, but the rest, the, the middle part was a little more difficult. Some of the, uh, the, the the ones at the end, I was able to put on the list pretty easily. Um, anything that surprised me personally, I guess, is how low Scorpion was. Uh, you know, I, I was surprised that he was uh, number 13 out of the 15. I kind of expected him to be a little bit higher, but when I actually looked at it, he would be my 13th choice, so I decided to put him there. Um, and... Maybe how high Electro got was kind of surprising as well. So those are kind of the surprising ones for me uh, that I found out when I started to do this list. But I'm a huge Spider-Man villain fan. I've loved a lot of the iterations of these guys in the films, and I can't wait going forward uh, to hopefully get some more, um, and maybe eventually, fingers crossed, get the Sinister Six uh, incarnation in a film, because I've wanted that forever. And we almost got it with Sony, but as soon as Sony started working with Marvel, um, their plans started to go out the window with that, which is unfortunate uh, to some degree. They weren't doing a great job with it anyway, but um, nonetheless, I would have taken an okay version of it than never at all. So we'll see. I really hope that we do get a Sinister Six incarnation eventually in the films. Uh, but for now, really love these Spider-Man uh, villains and can't wait to see more of them going forward. So let me know what you guys think of my choices, as well as I'd love to hear your guys' choices and your list and your ranking of these Spider-Man villains as well. And thanks so much for watching.